The fact that the capacity and destiny of men are different, as the Creator intended they should be, was understood by those early patriots who followed the immortal leaders of the revolution and by the pioneers who came later. These are harsh truths which many Americans today refuse to accept. Equality before God and before the law is not enough, they say. Liberty is not the chief and constant object of their desires. Equality is their 20th century idol. They would prefer equality in slavery to inequality with freedom. Liberal socialists in the 20th century who have acquired control of government, of many educational and religious institutions, and other major facilities which formulate public opinion, have used their power to distort the meaning of the American Revolution and to brainwash the public with the ideals of the French Revolution. Egalité, a fraternité, brotherhood and equality. Oh, the slogan of the French Revolution had liberté in it, but it was a borrowed word, borrowed from America, where it had meant individual responsibility under God. The American concept of liberty was founded on deep distrust of all governmental power. The American Founding Fathers knew that all governments, including the one they created, will, if permitted, rob and regulate and ultimately enslave the people under the pretense of taking care of them. They knew that the greatest threat to a man's life, liberty, and property is not some distant power, but the government under which he lives. They knew that men get their rights not from government, but from God. That's why they wrote a Bill of Rights as a footnote to the Constitution, re-emphasizing the strict constitutional limitation of federal power, reaffirming that human rights derived from God are unalienable, cannot legally be taken away by any earthly power. That was the meaning of liberty to the American revolutionists to the French Revolutionists, liberté meant, if it had any meaning at all, uncontrolled license for whoever had power at the moment to do anything he claimed to be good for the majority. Yes, the battle cry of the 18th century French Revolution was equality and brotherhood. And the remembered symbol of that revolt is the guillotine. Any man who held his head above the crowd had his head cut off because the French Revolution for collective equality and brotherhood was like its ultimate progeny, the Communist Revolution, a leveling down thing conceived in hate. It ended in Napoleon's dictatorship and a bloodbath for Europe. Democracy is the label which socialist liberals give to their passion for regulating and controlling all of mankind down to sterile conformity with mass desires and mass opinions. In their democracy, it will not do for an individual to have individual taste. If he lives in a house not pleasing to the rulers of democracy, he must accept urban renewal. The utopian goal is same. We must all live in the same kind of houses, breathe the same kind of atmosphere, attend the same kind of schools, read the same kind of newspapers, eat the same kind of food, and drink the same kind of fluoridated water. <laughs> Do everything in exact sameness until we achieve the uniform sameness that characterizes a litter of pigs. One of the greatest dangers in America today is widespread confusion about our organic and legal form of government. The difference between a democracy and the constitutional republic which was established to safeguard our freedom. In a representative democracy, the people periodically, by a majority vote at the polls, select their rulers, and the rulers then have absolute power 
to use the people and their property in whatever way the rulers decide because the rulers are doing whatever they do for the greatest good of the greatest number. Anyone who criticizes such rulers is an enemy of society because the rulers, after all, received a majority vote by promising to do those things. In a democracy, standing against the majority is a sin, particularly when elected rulers and their appointed agents are acting to promote the general welfare of the majority without regard to God-endowed rights of individuals. I have heard Americans, some of my friends, say, well, I agree with you that I'd rather die than submit to the tyranny of a dictator. But as long as I'm living in a free democracy and have my chance to speak my mind and cast my secret ballot, I'll submit readily to the will of the majority. Oh, my friends, would the yoke of slavery sit more lightly on your shoulders because it was held out to you by the hands of a million well-intentioned men rather than by one evil man? Is servitude sufferable merely because it is imposed by a majority who do not understand liberty or have the courage to fight for it? Should I be complacent and acquiescent about the betrayal of my son's heritage if the betrayal is perpetrated by a majority of my fellow countrymen? I was born free. I do not wish to live in a world where my God-endowed heritage is sacrificed for the abortive cause of a monolithic majority. The words that you say, the song says, too often the words you say or read aren't fit to repeat. Now, if I, as a seasoned adult, can't read these books or magazines without troubling my mind, what about you with your sensitive, developing mind? Let's tell it like it is. Let's admit that dirt is dirt, and not allow our minds to become perverted or misdirected by the superficial, sinful values of the pop writers and hucksters.